The incessant humming of flying insects drones out under a canopy of towering pine and yew trees. Dragonflies, wasps, and cicadas are all here, and the cacophonous ambience of the woodland at the height of summer is as recognizable 125 million years ago as it is today. This is China's Yixiang Formation, at the height of the early Cretaceous period. A place of warm woodlands, vast lakes, and dense shrubbery teeming with life. Everywhere you look, something is happening. A small monkey-like dinosaur chases a large insect into a broken tree hollow. Screeching pterosaurs whirl across a lake in pursuit of mayflies over the water's edge. Somewhere deep within the trees, a lone Bapiosaurus, a genus of long-clawed Therizinosaurus, calls out into the primal forest, seeking a mate. What is most striking about this world is its color. Blooming angiosperm plants Vibrant feathered dinosaurs and clear blue skies glow in the light of the early morning sun, which sends dappled light spots down onto the bright green leaves of the undergrowth. Soon the commotion of the forest finds its way to the banks of a lake. A bright flash of green, a lizard, darts from the undergrowth and scrambles up onto a fallen tree. Its breathing is frantic, and as soon as it has arrived, it has left once more. As a bright orange shape darts into the clearing and pounces upon the tree where the little reptile once stood. Standing before the lakeside on top of the fallen tree now, is a creature that resembles a dinosaur, but not in the traditional sense. There is not a scale in sight. This long-tailed, bright orange, filament-coated animal much more closely resembles a squirrel or a lemur than a dinosaur. However, the signs are all there. This little theropod stands on two legs, is equipped with sharp, curved claws, and owns a long, tapering tail. This little predator is Sinosauropteryx, a common resident of the Yixiang forests of the early Cretaceous. Today, we will meet this fascinating little theropod in all its glory. This is a dinosaur that we know in incredible detail, right down to the colors of its feathers. From its discovery to how it lived, Sit back as we take a journey through time to explore the life of Sinosauropteryx. In our previous videos on individual dinosaurs, we have typically focused on very large species. Sinosauropteryx was certainly not one of those. As a fully grown adult, it would have reached roughly one meter in length from nose to tail, and about 30 centimeters tall at the hip. It was roughly the size of a large domestic cat. Sinosauropteryx was a lithe, agile hunter of small vertebrates, most likely the numerous lizards and early mammals that populated the ancient Chinese forests in which the dinosaurs could be found. The bulk of the dinosaur's length was in its tail, a long, tapering structure that would have trailed along behind it as it ran, held high on the air. Sinosauropteryx's legs were long for its size, indicating that this was a creature that was perfectly equipped for darting along the forest floor after fast-moving prey items. Its head was small and bird-like, with a thin, slender snout perfect for snapping up small vertebrates. 
The dinosaur's primary weapon, however, was not its jaws, but its claws. Three long, curved structures on the end of each hand that were tipped in sharp points. Important tools for slashing at prey or defending itself from predators or rivals. Sinosauropteryx occupied the rich and diverse forests of China's Yixiang Formation, a fossil bed that we have covered before on this channel. Alongside it would have lived a variety of similar theropods, some of which were the least typically dinosaurian of all the dinosaurs known throughout the Mesozoic. It would have predated and have been predated upon by larger theropods occupying the forests with it. But it was by no means defenseless, being able to use its speed and claws to hold its own in a fight if necessary. Sinosauropteryx was a compsognathid theropod, that is, a member of the family Compsognathidae. The family derives its name from the famous dinosaur, Compsognathus, a genus well known from dinosaur books and Jurassic Park. The Compsognathids are often used to demonstrate the diversity in dinosaur size, as many genera and species from the family were indeed exceptionally small. The first fossils of what would come to be known as Sinosauropteryx prima were discovered in China's Liaoning province in August of 1996 by a part-time fossil hunter Li Yumin. Yumin would frequently scout out paleontological locations around the Liaoning province's Yixiang formation to make a living, alongside farming by selling his finds to museums. That year, however, he made the most important find of his career. Upon discovering the fossil, a perfectly preserved small theropod dinosaur split into two slabs of rock, Yu Min knew he'd found something special. He subsequently took his finds to two separate museums, selling one slab to the National Geological Museum in Beijing and the other to the Nanjing Institute of Geology and Paleontology. The fossil itself was marvelous. Splayed out on the slab of rock, you can perfectly trace the outline of the dinosaur. The skeleton is complete and recognizable and each individual bone can be clearly distinguished from the next with the naked eye. The dinosaur's internal organs are even preserved in immaculate quality within the rib cage. As for the position of the dinosaur, it lays with its tail held high above its head, one leg tucked into the body, and the head and neck splayed back, facing the same direction as the tail. What's even more remarkable about this specimen is that you can actually easily pick out individual feathers or filaments lining the dinosaur's body. These short proto-feathers are easy to discern on the fossil and make it look more like a small mammal or a bird than a reptile. It is, however, very clearly a dinosaur. Back at the museums, the specimens quickly attracted the attention of paleontologists. Ji Chiang and Philip Curry actually happened on the fossil by accident as they were visiting the museum. Curry told the New York Times, upon witnessing the fossil for the first time, that he bowled over when noticing the immaculate detail and preservation. The animal embedded in the rock was soon named and described by paleontologists. They called it Sinosauropteryx prima, 
or first Chinese reptilian wing, in reference to the filamentous protofeathers lining the fossil. Those feathers, tiny little filaments covering the entirety of the dinosaur's body, are what made this species so important to science. At the time Sinosauropteryx was studied, paleontologists were completely unaware that some dinosaurs were covered in feathers. And the discovery of this little theropod was the missing piece in the machine that helped them get to the level of understanding they have on the subject today. At first, however, scientists didn't really know what to make of these filaments. The fossil looks as though it is covered in a fine layer of fur, or hair, but on a dinosaur that would be simply impossible. While fine, the filaments lining the specimen more closely resemble feathers, and yet they were not fully fledged feathers, akin to the ones we would see in modern day birds. Rather, Sinosauropteryx was covered in a layer of short filaments, a type of offshoot from the kind of feathers you or I would recognize today. Upon the recognition of the structures lining the little dinosaur, the fossil was intensely and closely examined for three days in Beijing by a team of paleontologists. However, even after studying Sinosauropteryx under the microscope, the scientists were unable to come to a concrete conclusion of what these feather-like features were or what the fossil represented. Much controversy in the paleontological community ensued. Some paleontologists, such as Alan Fiducia, argued that the filaments were part of a frill that ran down the dinosaur's back and claimed that the paleontologists who had studied the fossils were getting their hopes up too high that the structures may be in any way related to bird feathers. Others suggested that these structures were collagen fibers, but the fact that pigmentation cells were present in the filaments counteracted this. The final nail in the filamentous coffin came from Fian M. Smithwick in 2017. He and his team, upon further study of the Sinosauropteryx prima specimens, discovered that the feathery integument present on the little theropod dinosaur was remarkably similar to those found on birds present in the Yixiang fossil formation. He proposed that all previous claims of collagen fibers or frills were simply mistaken and that these features were in fact scratches or shadows in the sediment. As it stands, Sinosauropteryx helped pave the paleontological path towards the modern image of theropod dinosaurs we know today. This was irrefutable proof that dinosaurs had evolved a filamentous feathery covering. These creatures were as diverse and personable as any modern day animal. But what did Sinosauropteryx prima use those feathers for? They were obviously far too short for flight. This was an animal that was built for running through forests at high speeds, not soaring high above them. The arms were built for grasping and slashing, not keeping the animal aloft. But still, the only modern animals that we know of that have feathers are birds, most of which use them for flight. So why did this little dinosaur possess similar structures? The answer, primarily, is to keep the animal warm when the temperatures drop. A creature covered in feathers stands a better chance of keeping itself warm on a cold winter night. The thicker the feathers, 
the warmer the animal can keep itself. It would seem, then, that flight is a secondary adaptation associated with feathers. The primary purpose of these spectacular features was to help protect early animals from the elements. As we will soon explore, however, this is not the sole purpose of the filaments covering little Sinusauropteryx. Sinusauropteryx prima is not simply just the first dinosaur to make its feathery integument known to science. It is also the first dinosaur to reveal the exact colorations and markings of that integument to science. Studies conducted by paleontologist Michael J. Benton and Fu Shang Zhang have helped us to discern that Sinusauropteryx prima was a rich ginger in color, a brownish orange covering the majority of its body. These ginger filaments covered the dinosaur's torso, legs, head, and neck. But that wasn't all. The dinosaur was countershaded, with filaments of a creamy white color lining the belly. Towards the tail, the dinosaur possessed a thick, banded pattern of ginger and white, and a dark, raccoon-like bandit mask covered the eyes. These discoveries were revolutionary, but how were they made, and what did they mean for this little dinosaur's lifestyle and habits? Once again putting Sinusauropteryx under the microscope, Benton and Zhang were keen to reveal the hues and pigments of these exceptionally well-preserved fossils based on the quality of the specimen's filaments. In November 2008, after putting the dinosaur under a scanning electron microscope, the paleontologists were able to reveal structures known as melanosomes on the fossil's filamentous covering. These are microscopic structures, capsule-like in shape, which can be found deep within the proteins of integument structures, such as hair in mammals and feathers in birds, and allow those structures to develop color. Now, biologists studying modern-day animals had already managed to discern which melanosomes matched up to which colors, and upon noting which melanosome types were present in the filamentous feathers of Sinusauropteryx, its ginger and white coloring was finally revealed once more after over 100 million years. Once more, dinosaurs were revealed to be much more complex than the huge lumbering lizards represented in times of old. Now that scientists knew the specific color of Sinusauropteryx prima, they could start speculating as to why this dinosaur was ginger and white. Pretty much everything about this dinosaur's appearance is known, right down to the patterning on the tail and face. Nothing in nature happens by chance. Everything evolves for a reason. Every single animal alive today is colored and built the way it is to match a purpose in nature, an ecological niche. So just like the brightly colored birds and reptiles alive today, Sinusauropteryx must have had its own reasons for its coloration. But what were they? Let's start with that amazing ginger and white-banded tail patterning when Benton and Zhang looked into the reasons for Sinusauropteryx's coloration, they were able to rule out camouflage. If these stripes were meant to keep the dinosaur well hidden, they would surely cover the whole body. Perhaps rather than using the tail to hide, it was used specifically to help the dinosaur get noticed by members of its own species. A clever display tool. As it stands, 
paleontologists are largely in agreement that Sinusoropteryx used its tail much like a modern-day ring-tailed lemur does, waving it around to signal availability to mate, or to warn others of impending danger. The bright-colored bands stand out against the rest of the animal, allowing it to quickly become noticed in times of need. The raccoon-like bandit mask surrounding the eye region of the dinosaur's face, however, is a different story. What could be the reason for this? It was Fian Smithwick, the paleontologist who has provided the most recent concrete evidence that Sinusoropteryx was feathered, who answered this question. He suggested that the similarities between the facial markings of modern raccoons and Sinusoropteryx was not by chance, but essentially an example of convergent evolution, where two unrelated animals evolved the same feature to adapt to a certain need. Smithwick's research indicated that the dark facial markings around the eyes of this dinosaur served as a warning to would-be attackers if a larger dinosaur attempted to make a meal of Sinusoropteryx, a flash of this contrasting coloration around the eyes could quickly put off the attacker. In Sinusoropteryx's case, the bandit mask likely served as a warning that the little theropod was equipped with sharp slashing claws that could be revealed in times of peril. A predator would be much less likely to take a creature with weapons such as those. Smithwick is also responsible for noting that Sinusoropteryx was countershaded. That is, the creamy white coloration that trails along the underside of the dinosaur across its belly. The purpose of the countershading is to help the dinosaur blend in against its habitat. If the dinosaur had to fight, it would, but a first preference would always be to hide from an attacker. The positioning of the countershading line on Sinusoropteryx is quite high of the dinosaur's flank, indicating that it likely lived in a densely forested environment, where the line could help break the dinosaur up in and amongst foliage rather than an open habitat like brushland or desert, where the sharp contrasting colors would stand out. The orange and white coloring likely helped disguise the dinosaur in times of desperation, with the ginger coloring on the torso matching up with the dappling of light from the canopy onto the forest floor. It's important to note that Sinusoropteryx isn't even the only dinosaur that we know the specific colors of. A whole new ancient world of color is revealing itself to paleontologists as methods of studying and finding fossils progress with technological advancement. As a result of studies into dinosaur pigmentation, we know for certain that Microraptor guai for example, a small theropod with the capability of gliding from tree to tree in Cretaceous China was an iridescent black color, offset with shimmering purples and greens, much like the tail feathers of a modern-day magpie. Anchiornis was a heavily feathered theropod, with black and white speckles on its wings, with a vibrant red crest that was most likely used for display purposes. Caudipteryx was essentially a dinosaurian turkey, dark brown in color, with striking dark bars on its tail feathers. It's not just theropods either. Several Ornithischian dinosaurs have revealed their colorful secrets to us off the back of paleontologists studying their exceptionally well-preserved remains. Cetacosaurus, a small Chinese ceratopsian dinosaur 
was dark brown in color, with black markings on its face, while Borealopelta, one of the best preserved dinosaurs ever found, was a heavily armored ankylosaur, draped in rich browns and reds. The reality of the prehistoric world is only just beginning to reveal itself to us in its full, glorious, vibrant wonder. The area in which Sinusauropteryx lived, towards the early Cretaceous of China, was, at the time, a verdant green woodland, separated by lakes and rivers. These forests stretched out for miles. The temperature was relatively warm, and huge numbers of dinosaurs, both small and large, populated the land. Yew, cypress, pine, and conifer trees towered tall across the landscape, while ferns and flowering plants spread out across the forest floor, providing plenty of cover and browsing material for the forest's smaller residents. Ginkgo trees, horsetails, cycads, and other gymnosperm plants also sprouted up in certain regions amidst the forests. This was a green world, full of lush browsing opportunities for many different animals. Dinosaurs were numerous in the Ishiang Formation, and many of them were both strange and feathered. Plenty of small theropods, such as Caudipteryx and Zenyuan Long, would have darted through the forest undergrowth in pursuit of small mammals and reptiles. Much stranger creatures existed here in the form of the long-toothed incisivosaurus, a lithe, feathered theropod with particularly strange dentition. The Therizinosaurus bapiosaurus was one of the larger herbivores of the region, a strange bipedal dinosaur with long curved claws for drawing vegetation into its mouth. At the top of the food chain was Eutyrannus, a huge predatory Tyrannosaurus covered in a layer of filamentous feathers. Fully grown, nine meter long adult individuals of this genus would have been impervious to attack from most other vertebrates in the region and preyed on many smaller dinosaurs of the Ishiang Formation. Sinosauropteryx, too, would likely have been on the menu for Eutyrannus if it wasn't quick enough to evade the apex predator's deep, powerful jaws. As well as the dinosaurs, the Ishiang Formation was home to a whole host of other creatures. Spectacular pterosaurs, such as Moganopterus and Gladocephaloideus, flew through the skies, whirling and screeching over the lakes in pursuit of prey. In the lakes themselves, a whole new ecosystem developed. Strange aquatic reptiles, such as the disproportionate Hyphalosaurus, looped and weaved their way through the murky freshwater, oblivious to the struggles to survive in the nearby forests. They shared the water with a whole host of amphibians. Early frogs and toads hopped and swam through the shallows, while salamanders clambered through plants at the water's edge. These tetrapods, in turn, would have lived alongside a striking variety of freshwater fishes. Amongst the specimens known from Ishiang are relatives of modern-day lampreys, arowanas, sturgeons, paddlefishes, bowfins, and even an indetermined shark. As is the case with many locales in the modern day, the ecosystem was powered by invertebrates. Beetles, dragonflies, wasps, 
stick insects, mayflies, cicadas, crickets, lacewings, and cockroaches would have lived here in colossal numbers and would have provided food for numerous small insectivorous dinosaurs. The lake water was rife with crustaceans and mollusks, which would have found themselves preyed upon by numerous species of amphibians and fishes. The Ishiang fossil formation is a wonderfully diverse site and is known very well to scientists. Cynoceropteryx was just one example of life from the blossoming ecosystem found in ancient Liaoning. Cynoceropteryx prima has taught us a gigantic amount about theropod dinosaurs. It has the honor of being the first dinosaur to reveal its true appearance to the scientific world. This was an amazing little creature, unlike anything else alive on Earth today. With brightly colored feathers and long, sharp claws, this little animal would certainly stand out in the forests and woodlands of the modern day. Cynoceropteryx is also credited with being the first dinosaur to reveal its true colors to the scientific world too. There are few dinosaurs that we know quite as well as this one, with its light ginger and white coloring, banded tail and dark bandit mask over the eyes. There's no way the first specimen unearthed in China could have ever known just how important and special it would be in time. This dinosaur represents more than just a handful of important discoveries, though. Cynoceropteryx shows that there is so much about these ancient animals that we still don't know. Their secrets may well still be out there, trapped beneath the layers of ancient rock and sediment. Who knows what may be revealed in time, as paleontologists gain access to continuously improving technologies. As studies continue, maybe one day we will be able to reconstruct dinosaurs and art with complete accuracy. With revelations surrounding appearance, scientists can eventually discern more about dinosaur behavior and habits which will only serve to unlock more and more answers to some of the most interesting questions known to science. Cynoceropteryx may just be one piece of the puzzle, but we have a tremendous amount to thank this little theropod for. <laughs>